Hello and welcome to another episode of Chairlift Philosophy. Whenever I bring up philosophy to people in general, the first thing people usually come up with are philosophies of life and ways of living. And one of the most prevalent among these is Stoicism. Now Stoicism has been used in the current age to, be, to mean something like um, radical self-improvement, you know, going to the gym, doing everything you should be doing, waking up on time. You know, this is a lot of the practices associated with Stoicism as well as an impassivity to the external world and being unreactive. That's kind of what people tend to believe when they hear the word stoicism. You know, a stoic person is someone who is emotionless in, in the state of, of crisis or something like this. And it's not too far from the general principle of philosophy, but we'll go into more detail. So Stoicism dates back to a philosopher called Zeno of Citium and he was inspired by the works of Socrates and uh, Stoicism actually covered a very long period over the Greek and Roman period with notable Stoics including the orator Seneca, uh, the former slave Epictetus and uh, the emperor Marcus Aurelius and there's actually a very good video on this which I'll link in the description about Marcus Aurelius. So what is Stoicism? Stoicism kind of is a, like I said before, is a philosophy that focuses on a way of life, you know. It's, it's about an actionable philosophy, something you can actually put into practice. But at the same time, they do have certain views on the physics of the world. So they tend to be materialistic or corporealistic, as they would say, as they only believe certain bodies are, exist and certain subsistent qualities as well. Um, and along with this, they emphasise the logos, or eternal reason, or uh, generating fire, as they might call it in poetic terms. As well as this, there's a very large focus on virtue ethics, which a lot of Socratic philosophers and Socratic-inspired philosophers would focus on, such as Aristotle. They are also fatalistic, which kind of means there's there's only one future. There's you know in a materialistic world, they believe in kind of a determinism in a sense. So your decisions kind of come down to fate, you know, that's the supreme guidance or, or the logos or the supreme reason is kind of what's guiding your actions in a way. Stoicism was also a big precursor to certain religions, especially Christianity, as it emphasises virtue and also is a kind of uh, solution to the problem of suffering in a way. So the best way to get an understanding of Stoicism is to go through the four cardinal virtues and these are going to be wisdom, temperance, courage and justice and you can kind of see how this is harkens back to virtues in uh, Christianity as well. So the first cardinal virtue of wisdom is quite an important tenet of Stoicism as um, this is usually about the wisdom to know the difference between internalities and externalities and the reason this is important for Stoicism is because Internalities are the things that you have control over. This is your internal state, how you respond to certain situations. But externalities are the things that you have no control over. And, and this would preach like a philosophy of acceptance and indifference to these kind of things. So the next virtue would be temperance. And this is kind of on the acceptance side of our um, dichotomy. So this is about uh, acting as minimally as possible, being moderate in all situations and trying trying not to overreact to any any kind of situation you're the master of your emotions in a way so you're a temperate person 
and um, I think this can kind of link to the principle of amor fati, where you, the love of fate in a way. So you kind of just accept the way things go and you don't try and resist too much against, against the goings of the world. So the third virtue is going to be courage. And this is about being able to persist and resist through challenging times. So this will be um, trying to develop yourself as, you know, one of, as one of those internal things. You're trying to become a virtuous person in a sense. And this, this one of the main themes of that is being courageous. And this relates to exercises in Stoicism called voluntary discomfort exercises. This will be stuff like waking up early, having a shower, eating plain meals. This is doing things willingly discomfortly so to develop yourself as a person to become better and stronger in a way more courageous this is closely related to the stoic mantra memento mori which means remember that you'll die and uh, this is often uh, cited quite a lot on the internet and people will make jokes about it but it's often that it's often worth thinking that your life is limited you know because it means that you're going to use it so much better knowing that there's you're going to die one day and so the final um, stoic virtue is going to be justice. Now justice is about uh, acting in accordance with the logos and um, with the, you know, the harmony of the universe, the eternal reason in a way. And stoics, stoics believe that every unhappiness kind of stems from a kind of um, disjunction with the logos. So you're not perfectly in union with it. And so justice is about acting according to it, according to fairness, and it's also kindness as well. They're also the first people to have the idea of cosmopolitanism, where you're kind of a, a citizen of the world, rather, because we're, we're all brothers and sisters in a way. So kindness is a kind of opposite to anger for Stoics, because anger is about trying to thwart others, but kindness is trying to help others. So this is where Stoics um, have their moral side in a way. So what's the problem with Stoicism? It sounds like a good philosophy and honestly I do agree with most of what Stoicism believes. It's, I believe it's a very good actionable philosophy to get people living their life in a good way and much of um, life philosophers nowadays would be Stoics. They'd say to get your life in order and you know stop, try not to worry about the externalities of the world, just try and make yourself better in a way, improve yourself. This is exactly what I think the problem with Stoicism is. I think it's much too inwardly focused. It's, it's, an, it's a self-philosophy in a way. It's improvement of the self. Even when they talk about justice and kindness, to be moral and good to others, it's kind of just in a way to improve yourself, you know, just in virtue of making yourself a more virtuous person. There was an analogy one Stoic philosopher talks about, is about shooting an arrow to a target. You know, you can focus on pulling the bowstring and aiming your arrow as close as you can but once it leaves the bow you, you can't worry about it because you have no power over it and I think this is too internally focused we should be externally worried to some extent you know we have political concerns we have global concerns we should still have some external uh, concern for the world to continue in this vein I think stoicism isn't um, a complete moral philosophy it talks about self-improvement and you know overcoming your um, passions but it doesn't talk about um, so much as how to be self giving to other people it kind of gets the masculine traits of justice but on the other side is mercy which is a more feminine trait which is a more giving trait which uh, stoicism doesn't really go much into and another criticism of stoicism is i'm not sure if the fatalistic attitude kind of leaves enough room for free will in a way I know the Stoics make this distinction between the internal which you have control over and the external which you don't, but I don't see how they can justify that. Why are you in control of your internal and not the external? They don't seem to wrestle with the problem of free will other than say uh, the force of fate kind of determines everything. The final thing I think it's missing is it's too focused on self-improvement that it doesn't have any concern for uh, carefree artistic expression and stuff like that. Even beauty which is like Platonic form in a way they they reject they reject platonic forms wholesale because they're kind of a materialist philosophy but I think this is a mistake because so much of what we tap into is is the beauty of the world and even philosophy is quite a beautiful you know way to live life now this brings me to my media moment which for stoicism honestly there's loads to choose from um, we have 
I'll link the films in the descriptions, but you have films like Gladiator, um, 300, uh, you have Cool Hand Luke is a very good one. Uh, even Marlon Brando is a character through his films, if you notice, he's, he's quite a stoic character in, in On the Waterfront or uh, The Godfather. These are, these are really good ones to check out. Um, also, uh, Shawshank Redemption kind of encapsulates uh, stoicism as a whole very well. But for my media moment, I'm going to choose the book Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. The reason I chose this is it's actually a, a real life example of, um, of this psychologist, Viktor Frankl, who was a Holocaust survivor and he documents his, um, his life through the prison camps in Nazi Germany and the really severe environments they had to go through. Many people commit suicide and not knowing when the torture would end. In the second half of his book, he details his theory of logotherapy, which is essentially um, treating patients by finding meaning in the world. It's one of the most important things you can do. And, um, and also, I thought this was a very good choice because he kind of makes up for some of the things Stoicism lacks in. So the, the three areas which Frankl details as areas of which one can find uh, meaning in your life would be purposeful work, um, courage in the face of adversity and uh, loving relationships. I think loving relationships is a very important caveat to have uh, to stoicism that kind of completes it in a way and his focus on meaning I think is a little bit more on, on point than stoicism is but nonetheless there's lots of stoic tenets in man's search for meaning and a cultural pillar of stoicism I would say. Thank you for listening to Chairlift Philosophy. Hope to see you again next time and don't forget to like and subscribe.